بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, carrying on uh, with Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه whose participation in the battlefield so after the battle of Badr we have in the third year of Hijrah we have the battle of Uhud a, be, uh, a brief background to the battle of Uhud is that the Mushrikeen wanted to avenge the loss that they had in the previous year. So Abu Sufyan had told them, who was their leader, that for the entire year what we will do is all the money that we accumulate, we will utilize it in the battle of Uhud. And this is what happened. So the Mushrikeen came the following year with an army of approximately 3,000. The Muslims were approximately 1,000 and then later on a portion of the army broke away and there was only 700 of them who actually faced the Mushrikeen. Now, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a specific command to the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum and some of them did not obey the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this battle, the battle of Uhud, Although the Muslims were only 700, they were actually defeating the Mushrikeen. But when they, for when the command of the Prophet wasallam, then this battle which they were winning actually became a loss. Then the Prophet wasallam, the Mushrikeen attacked the Prophet wasallam, and rumors spread that the Prophet wasallam had passed away. The first person to find the Prophet وسلم, was a Sahabi anhu called Ka'b ibn Malik. Ka'b ibn Malik anhu says that I saw the Prophet وسلم, and I could see his eyes glowing behind his helmet. And I said to the Sahaba, glad tidings that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is still alive. Now what actually happened when the rumor spread that the Prophet Sallallahu had passed away was that some of the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum had actually left the battlefield. Then you had other Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum like Anas bin Nadr. Anas bin Nadr said, if the Prophet Sallallahu has passed away, then there's no good in living anymore. So he went into the battlefield and he was martyred Radiallahu Anhu. Now, when he made, when Ka'b ibn Malik made the announcement that the Prophet وسلم, was still alive. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, a handful who heard this, they hurried to the Prophet وسلم. One of the first people to reach the Prophet وسلم, was no other than Abu Bakr Sadiq Now Abu Bakr anhu, moved to the Prophet وسلم. The Prophet وسلم, was obviously injured. He had the two rings of his helmet, which had gone into his cheeks. He had one of his teeth broken. So he moved forward to remove the rings. So Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu anhu said, Abu Bakr, give me the honor, give me the privilege of removing these rings. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu allowed him. Now Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu anhu regarded it as disrespectful to actually pull it out with his hands. So what he did is that he pulled it out with his teeth. So when he pulled the first one out, he lost one tooth. Then when he pulled the second one out, he lost the second tooth. Then the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, go and look after your brother. Which brother? Talha ibn Abaydillah. Why? Because Talha ibn Abaydullah radiallahu anhu was standing in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam protecting the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the degree that he took so many arrows that the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a guarantee that he would attain Jannah on the battle of Uhud. So this was the day, the battle of Uhud, that Talha ibn Ubaidillah became one of the 10 who was guaranteed Jannah by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The message of Allah said, O Jubalak ya Talha, O Jubalak. Jannah has become wajib for you. Jannah has become wajib for you. Why? Because in the manner that he protected the Prophet Sallallahu Now, this is a jeep thing in this battle. The one who threw the rock 
at the, and broke the tooth of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Utbah, the brother of Sa'd. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cursed Utbah, Ajib. On the other hand, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam specifically asked for Sa'd, who was a Muslim at the time, he said, where's Sa'd? So Sa'd radiallahu anhu says, I was sitting there and I was contemplating what to do because I heard the Prophet ﷺ had passed away. And then somebody shouted that the Messenger of Allah is remembering you. So Sa'ad says, I jumped up, I went into the middle, and the Prophet ﷺ made me stand next to him. And the Prophet ﷺ took out an arrow, and Sa'ad was the expert marksman, and he said, Sa'ad, take the arrow. And he said, shoot, may my mother and my father be sacrificed for you. Ali radiallahu anhu says, for nobody other than Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gather his mother and father. For some he would say, may my father be sacrificed for you. For others he would say, may my mother be sacrificed for you. Only for Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, may my mother and my father be sacrificed for you. How many times? The narration mentioned he shot over a thousand arrows. The Prophet ﷺ said over a thousand times, may my mother and my father be sacrificed. Same battle. Prophet ﷺ curses one brother and he makes dua for the other brother. But really, after the battle finishes, the Muslims retreat now to the mountain. The Muslims have had serious losses. 70 Sahaba radiallahu anhum have been martyred. And Abu Sufyan now really points out to the virtue of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're in the mountain and Abu Sufyan, now night has fallen, he shouts out. He says, is Muhammad still alive? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, remain quiet, nobody say a word. Then after asking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, is the son of Abi Kuhafa, Meaning Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, is he alive? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, remain quiet. Then he says, is the son of Khattab, referring to Umar ibn Khattab, is he alive? And then what Umar says, inshallah, we will cover that when we deal with the life of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. But here you see that Abu Sufyan knew the virtue of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. That after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he says, he asked regarding Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr would often remember the day of Uhud and he would cry and he would say Uhud was the day of Talha. Talha to Ibn Ubaidullah. He will remember, he said Uhud was his day. Imagine, subhanAllah, such an amazing battle. The battle of Uhud and, the, and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu would say Uhud was the day of Talha radiallahu anhu. In the sixth year, of Hijrah, we had the Ghazwa Bani Mustaliq. Now, what was the Ghazwa Bani Mustaliq? The Prophet Sallallahu had heard that the tribe of, of, of Mustaliq, the Bani Mustaliq, wanted to attack Medina. Now, this was the same tribe who fought alongside the Mushrikeen against the Muslims on Uhud. So the Prophet Sallallahu took it very seriously. So what the Prophet Sallallahu did is that he he gathered an army. Now, throughout, just to give you a bit of background, throughout this battle, the Munafiqeen were always causing problems. So when they were coming back, a dispute broke out between the Muhajirun and the Ansar. Somebody joked, it started actually from a joke. Somebody kicked another person on the backside and he got offended. And the Ansar started calling the Ansar and the Muhajirun started calling the Muhajirun. And then you had the Munafiqeen and the leader of the Munafiqeen. Who knows the name of the leader of the Munafiqeen? Naam. Uh, Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Very good. Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. He now wants to stir things up. And he said, look at these people. They came here. They had nothing. We gave them any, everything. And then he said his famous statement. He said, Sammin kalbak ya'kulk. He said, when you fatten up your dog and it's fat enough, a day will come that it will eat you up. And then he said, 
When we return to Medina, those who are honorable will boot out those who are dishonorable. Referring to the Muslims and the Muhajirun and the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. لَإِنْ رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَيُخْرِجَنَّ الْعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلِ Now when he said this, some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum actually wanted to kill him. The Prophet ﷺ said, leave him. If you do kill him, people will say that Muhammad kills his own. Because people from outside see him as a Muslim. So now you can see all this has been already stirred up. There's a tension between the real believers and the munafiqeen. Now what happens is on a journey, generally the Prophet wasallam would take one of his wives. He would normally do, draw lots whose name came out, he would take them. In this battle, the Prophet wasallam had Aisha radiallahu anha with him. Now, Aisha radiallahu anha is with the Prophet sallallahu they're returning and they stop off. And Aisha radiallahu anha goes and relieves herself. Now when she goes to relieve herself, she loses her necklace, a necklace that she had borrowed for somebody else and she loses this. So she's looking around for the necklace, obviously it's dark, no lights. By the time she comes back, the caravan has left. Now. Aisha radiallahu anha would sit in a kind of a carriage. That carriage would be lifted and it would be placed on the camel. Now, obviously, the menfolk didn't look inside the carriage, and Aisha radiallahu anha was known to be quite small in stature. So they didn't realize that the carriage was empty. They picked it up and they put it on the, car on the camel and it left. So Aisha radiallahu anha now says, I sat in the same place. Obviously, if they're going to come back, they're going to come to the same place where the caravan was and they'll see me there. Now, one of the customs that the Prophet ﷺ will do is that behind the caravan, he would leave one person who would follow. And if they had dropped anything or if anything had been left behind, if any individual had been left behind, he would take them with him. He would pick them up. So on this occasion, he left a Sahabi radiallahu anhu, a very uh, well-known Sahabi called Safwan ibn Mu'attal radiallahu anhu. So Aisha radiallahu anha says she went to sleep. And Safwan ibn Mu'attal comes and, he, and she says that the only thing that woke me up was him saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And because he had seen her before hijab, he knew that this was... Aisha radiallahu anha. Now she says that I had never ever met a man more who had more haya than Safwan. He didn't say a word. He put the camel down. He made me sit on the camel. And even Safwan himself says that even before Jahiliyyah, in the days of Jahiliyyah, before Islam, I never committed zina. So I had never ever committed zina. So now Safwan radiallahu anha, who he takes Aisha radiallahu anha and until they reach the Muslims. Now when they reach the Muslims, Abdullah ibn Ubay, the leader of the Munafiqeen, says, who's that? They say, oh, it's Aisha, she got left behind. So he says, she wasn't saved from him and he wasn't saved from her. Meaning, that na'udhu billah, you know, that she had a relationship with him, na'udhu billah. Now Aisha radiallahu anha says that when I reached back, I became ill. For an entire month, I was very unwell. And she says that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come. But he was not the same to me. He would ask me how I am. But he wasn't the same warm husband that he's normally. I couldn't really understand this, she says until a month, approximately a month had elapsed, and I got better, and I went out to relieve myself. And when I went to relieve myself, I was with a woman who is the mother of a man called Mista. So her foot slips, and she says, may Mista be destroyed. So Aisha radiallahu anha says, why are you cursing Mista? Mista, was a Badri Sahabi radiallahu anhu, you know, such an eminent Sahabi, why are you cursing Mista? So she said, you don't know. She said, what, know what? She said, the rumors about you. And my son Mista is embroiled in those rumors. He's a Badri Sahabi, but he was embroiled in those rumors. 
So Aisha radiallahu anha says, I asked her, does the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa know? She said, yes. So Aisha radiallahu anha says, I went back home. And then after a short while, I took permission from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that can I go back to my mother's home? And she said, the only reason I wanted to go back to my mother's home was to actually ascertain, are these rumors true? Are there actually rumors circulating? So she, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa gave her permission. She says that I went to my mother's house. And I asked my mother, are these rumors true? She said, yes, the rumors are true. And then she said, don't worry, my daughter. Look, subhanAllah, Ajeeb. You know, how this must have been so burdensome on the mother. But, but a good parent, she's consoling. You know, she, she's consoling her daughter. She said, don't worry, my uh, daughter. When a husband has a beautiful wife and she has co-wives, there are always people who will try to bring her down. People who are jealous. People who will spread rumors. So she says, don't worry. Aisha radiallahu anha says, when I heard this news, I fainted. And then when I gained consciousness, I just cried and I cried and I cried. At the end of the day, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes home and he asks his wife, he says, well, why is Aisha crying? And she told her that she's heard about the rumors. And the narration mentioned that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's eyes began to flow as well. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam now, he consults the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. He brings Osama, Ali, and he says, what do you think? What do you think? Do you think these rumors are true? So Osama radiallahu anhu says, he says, O Messenger of Allah, we only know good about Aisha radiallahu anhu. Ali radiallahu anhu says, he says that, O Messenger of Allah, if you want to marry again, there are many other women. And Aisha obviously took this quite bad when she heard about this. And then Osama radiallahu anhu said, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, ask Barira. Barira is her slave. She lives in her home. She will tell you everything. So they call Barira. And Barira radiallahu anhu says, she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I know nothing but besides good about Aisha. Nothing but besides good. Besides that, she's young. She sometimes, she sometimes needs the dough. And then she leaves it uncovered and the goat comes and eats it because she's young. But that's the only fault I see in her. No other fault. And then in some narrations, it's mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ also consulted Umar ibn Khattab. And he said to Umar, he said, Umar, what do you say? Umar said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, did Allah command you to marry her? He said, yes, then Allah would never choose a wife like that for you. And Barira also said, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if she had done what they accuse her of doing, Allah would have informed you. Allah would have informed you. Now, the question arises, why did the Prophet ﷺ ask Osama and Ali? Because both of these young men grew up in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. Both of them grew up in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. They, 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 they knew the mizaj of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ loved them immensely. And they knew that they would give him the best mashwara. So after this, the Prophet ﷺ now goes to the pulpit and he said, who will now? So he, he gathers all the Sahaba anhum, and he says to them, he said, who will now give me my right regarding my family? There are people who are slandering my family and I only know good about my family, my wife. And they are accusing her of having an affair with a person who only I only know good about him, meaning Safwan ibn Muattal. You know, he's a good person. He's known to be good, upright individual. So who will give me my right regarding Saad ibn Muadh radiallahu anhu stand up? Saad ibn Muadh was the leader of Aws. So Saad ibn Muadh is also known to be the Abu Bakr of the Ansar. He was very obedient to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Saad ibn Muadh says, "O Messenger of Allah, if he's from the Aws, then let us know. We will kill him." Okay. Now Saad ibn Ubada was the leader of Khazraj, and Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul was from the Khazraj. So he stands up and he obviously they all know that the real instigator is this guy. So he stands up and he says, Oh, Messenger of Allah, he's lying. 
He's only saying this because he knows that Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul is from the Khazraj. If he was from the Aus, he wouldn't say this. So then they begin to argue with each other. And can you imagine the Prophet is already upset? You know, his wife is being accused of this. And now, now the Sahaba are, are arguing here. So the Prophet وسلم, even after all this, the Prophet وسلم, calmed him down. He calmed him down. He put aside his own interest for the betterment of the community. So the Prophet وسلم, calms them down. And then he and then he goes to Aisha radiallahu anha. Now Aisha radiallahu anha says that she cried so much she did not stop crying from the time she heard this news. She says that I thought I cried so much I thought my liver is going to dry up. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes to the house of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Aisha is there. Aisha's mother is there, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam addresses Aisha. And he says, "Oh Aisha." If you have committed a sin, then ask Allah for forgiveness. Aisha says, I was so hurt that this was the first time I stopped crying. Because I was so hurt by the statement of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I stopped crying. And I said to my father, reply on my behalf. And my father, Abu Bakr radiallahu said, Oh Aisha, what can I say? On one side is my daughter, on the other side is the messenger of Allah. She said, then I turned to my mother and I said, oh, my mother, reply on my behalf. My mother said, oh Aisha, what can I say? On one side is my daughter, on the other side is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Aisha replied herself. She says, if I told you that I am innocent, you won't believe me. If I told you I'm innocent, you won't believe me. And if I say that I have committed the sin, then you will say to me, then ask Allah for forgiveness. But Allah knows I haven't committed the sin. So I say to you, what Yaqub والسلام, what the father of Yusuf said, Sabrun Jameel. I'll do my sabr. And then Aisha radiallahu anha says, I got up from there and I went to my bed. And she says, I knew I was hopeful that Allah would reveal my innocence. Allah would exonerate me. But she said, I never thought I was so worthy that Allah would reveal the Quran regarding me. La ilaha illallah. I never thought that my status would be such by Allah. That I was that worthy that Allah would reveal the Quran regarding me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed 10 verses regarding this issue. Ten verses regarding Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah says that when it came to Yusuf alayhi salatu salam and Zulaikha said that he committed zina with her or he moved, made a move on her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a child from her family bear testimony to the innocence of Yusuf alayhi salatu salam. When it came to Isa alayhi salatu salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Isa's, Mary, Isa's mother, Maryam alayhi salatu salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Isa alayhi salatu salam a child, a baby, the ability to speak. They say when it came to Aisha, the family of Abu Bakr, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah didn't use a child. Allah himself spoke. Allah himself spoke. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses. In the Quran. So when the verses are revealed, the Prophet وسلم, comes to Aisha and he gives her glad tidings. Her mother says, Stand up, meaning stand up and thank the Prophet. Aisha was hurt. And then it's a husband, a husband and wife have their own relationship. Nobody can understand that relationship. She said, I will only thank the one who revealed my innocence, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only one that I will thank, nobody else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal the verses. I just want to uh, go take a couple of lessons, brief lessons from the verses and some other brief lessons from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ja'u bil ifqi usbat minkum. Allah says that those who have come with this slander, this accusation, are a group from amongst you. 
Then Allah says, لا تحسبوه شر لكم بل هو خير لكم Allah. Allah says, do not regard this as evil for you, but it's good for you. Now, how can it be good for you? How can this be good for you? I'll tell you how it's good for you. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us eternal lessons. Although the message of Allah and Aisha radiallahu anhuma, the Prophet sallallahu and Aisha, you know, who were obviously exonerated and, and uh, who were ex exalted in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had to go through difficulty. But there is an eternal lesson for you and I in this. An eternal lesson. That when you hear a slander, you don't spread the slander. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the, in the following verse, he says something very, very he, said, he said, when you heard this, why did, you, why did the believers not say, So Allah says, when you heard this, why was it not the case? And why didn't they say that this is a big slander? That's all it is, a, a manifest slander. Look at the words Allah uses. Allah says that the believers, when they heard this, you should have said, you should have thought good. The Muslim, uh, Muslim men and women should have thought good. Allah doesn't say بِالْآخِرِينَ regarding others. No, Allah is saying about yourself. Meaning when another Muslim is slandered, you should feel like you are being slandered yourself. When you hear rumors about other people, you feel that that rumor is actually regarding yourself. Be And said, so this is a manifest accusation. It's, it's a slander. It's a slander. So a couple of other uh, lessons taken from this is that never spread rumors regarding people's personal lives. This is the most devastating thing that you can do. Husband, wife, children. We live in a time of social media. It's very easy to slander people, even if it is untrue. On that same point, related to that same point, Mr. Hamna and Hassan ibn Thabit. So Mr. Hamna, Hassan ibn Thabit, these were Sahaba and eminent Sahaba. Because they slandered Aisha radiallahu anha, each one of them were given 80 whips, 80 lashes. Eight, now these are Badri, Badri Sahabi. There is nobody who protected the Prophet sallallahu as much as Hassan ibn Thabit when it came to when people would slander the Prophet sallallahu because he was a poet. The only Sahabi that the Messenger of Allah ever, ever put a chair in the masjid for him to read poetry was Hassan ibn Thabit. But even Hassan, even, even Mista, even Hamna were not above the law. Because Allah wanted to show the gravity of this statement regarding other people's families. Second lesson. This is a jeep. The Prophet وسلم, although he was hurt by this, he never said anything bad to Aisha. Can you imagine this? He never said a word, he never, never hit her, never slandered her, never said anything to her. She's been slandered. There's rumors going around regarding his wife and the Prophet وسلم, doesn't say a word. What does he do? He consults people. He consults intelligent people. Not people who will make the situation worse, who will stir it up like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, but he consults people. And from here you see the hilm of the Prophet sallallahu The forbearance of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu And then I want to take a ajeeb, ajeeb uh, here. You know, Mista. Mista was the family of Abu Bakr radiallahu When Mr. spread this rumor. Abu Bakr was obviously very hurt that he started saying this about his daughter and the wife of the Prophet Now, Mr. was very poor. Abu Bakr was well to do. So Abu Bakr anhu would spend on Mr. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, then he took an oath that he would never ever spend on Mr. again. When the verses were revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
commands those who spend upon the muhajireen and the ansar and the poor people that you carry on spending upon them do not stop spending on them and right at the end allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ala tuhibbuna an yaghfir allah lakum ala tuhibbuna an yaghfir allah lakum wallahu ghafurur rahim he says this is surah nur verse number 22 allah says ala tuhibbuna an yaghfir allah lakum do you not wish that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you do you not wish, like, do you not wish that Allah forgive you? Look at, look at the nature of the slander. He slandered your wife, the Prophet Sallallahu If the Quran wasn't from Allah, if the Quran wasn't from Allah, if it was from a person, nafs like some people claim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never would have revealed these verses. How can you forgive a man who has slandered your wife? But the Prophet, because the, Deliver is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through this for over a month. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if the Quran was made up by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he could have revealed his verse in the second day and exonerated his wife. But he had to go through all that hurt and pain because the Quran is from Allah and Allah has his own prescribed times. And look at Abu Bakr, la ilaha illallah, ajeeb, this is Abu Bakr. When he hears this verse, do you not wish that Allah, do you not love that Allah forgives you? Now his daughter has been slandered by who a man that he used to spend upon. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, Bala wallahi inni la ahibbu an yaghfir Allah li. He said, by Allah, no doubt, by Allah, I love the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. Then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu broke his initial oath, gave a kafara, and then took another oath that he would carry on spending until Mista, until his final day. This was a person, subhanallah, if the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were revealed, he listened. He took an oath that until his final day that he would spend upon Mista. So these are the lessons that we learn from this. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to follow the beautiful teachings of the deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our tongues uh, away from the irad, the honor and the blood and uh, the sanctity of other individuals. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Zakumullah khairan for watching and please do not forget to watch the next episode and inshallah with your du'as there will be plenty more history series coming very soon. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.